I would not get a style that does not have a safety stop because it's very easy to potentially drive too far and drop off and damage your car. Welcome to the shop. I'm Jared and this is Wrench Every Day. Today's another one of our technical tip, kind of not really how to's, but just some advice to help you guys in your day to day quest to wrench every day. We want to make sure you guys are able to do it safely, save some money and have fun while you're doing it. So today's topic is one where I'm sure you've all done it. You've probably done it alone a few times and you've probably done a few things that you'd be pretty embarrassed if someone walked in and caught you doing it. Talking about jacking your car up to work on it. So behind me, I have a series of different methods, tools related to the process of getting your vehicle jacked up to work on. Some of them are very wrong. Some of them are okay. Some of them should be returned to the store because they're under recall, but I had them to show the point. Hey everyone, it's Tavares from the future. I'm on a set. You can probably guess what I'm doing right now, but since Jared is over there working on a car, I have a little bit of downtime. And when I have downtime, I use today's sponsor, which I wanted to introduce to you guys, and that is Raid Shadow Legends. If you've never heard of Raid Shadow Legends, welcome to the internet. It's everywhere, and there's a great reason for it. Raid Shadow Legends is a fun, free video game that you can play on your mobile device and now on your desktop at home as well. One of my favorite features is when I have the downtime, you have a fantastic campaign story mode to play through or awesome PvP battles where you can fight with your friends against other teams. If you haven't played before, now is a great time to jump in. They've just added champion fragments, which let you collect pieces of champions that you can use to summon specific awesome champions with special events running all the time. There's also the new Bizarre update where you can load up on high value items with the gold bars you win in the all new tag arena. They've extended daily login awards up to 270 days with free champions available just for logging in. It's a crazy month with updates, so there's not a better time to start. And for the new players out there, if you click the link in the video description below, you're gonna get an awesome head start. You're gonna get 50,000 silver, 50 gems, one boss key, a one day XP boost bonus, and your own epic champion, the Hexweaver. Check her out, she's awesome. And you'll find all those treasures right here. So hurry up and join us in Raid Shadow Legends, the epic mobile and now PC game. Link in the description below. Hopefully we'll see you in the game where we'll get to uh, maybe play a little bit together. Back to the past, let's get jacking. What I wanted to go through primarily today is show you some of the tools to get a vehicle up and then we are going to go through and jack a solid frame truck up. We've got Johnny Rev here. I actually need to get him lifted off the ground so I can adjust the camber out because he goes on a trailer for the rest of the fabrication and soon driving. And then I've got my beautiful 1989 Toyota Supra. Granted, it's dirty, the paint is faded, it doesn't have an engine, but it is so beautiful to me because it was my first really built Supra, the car I drove away in my wedding in, and I can't wait to share putting this back together for you. But that's well down because we've got that truck, we have a 300Z there, a limo, Freddy's SC, we've got lots of cars. But let's get on topic today. We have a traditional drive up ramp. We've got some floor jacks. We've got jack stands. We've got some tools and pieces of wood that do have appropriate places when you're supporting a vehicle. And then we have a screw jack. I don't have a bottle jack here. Uh, the closest thing I could maybe show you something on the hydraulic press over there. It is a small straight ram cylinder that can lift vertically but it's a little bit tricky to use when supporting a vehicle to work on it yourself. So on the ground, we have a pair of floor jacks. There are other styles that get a lot smaller that have small little lift pucks that you can get very commonly and like stashing kits where you'll have the jack, two small jack stands that are good to kind of throw into the car. This is what a lot of you will probably have in your garage. It's a little bit bulky, short reach, but they're very affordable and they're built pretty robust, good to work. 
This is a low reach design able to get under the low profile cars that we traditionally work on. So if we kind of look from an angle, you can see how close that is compared to how tall that is even without its lifting puck on it. This lifting puck is lower than those front wheels. So these are both perfect, great to use jacks to get underneath and lift a car on a factory lift point, on a subframe, on a differential, anything you need to do to lift a car up to set it up for heavy work. Another way you can get a car up, let's say you're just doing a quick oil change and all you need to do is get the car up a couple inches. These drive on ramps work incredibly well. I prefer the metal over these plastic. This one's been warped a little bit, but these give you an opportunity to get under a car very quickly for basic service. You would just tuck it up against your front wheels and drive up. Most of them have a really good stop built into it. I would not get a style that does not have a safety stop because it's very easy to potentially drive too far and drop off and damage your car. Another way that these work very well is if, if you don't have a low profile jack, but you have a very low car, you're able to drive up onto this ramp enough to get your big jack underneath and lift the car for a jack stand. So jack stands. Let's take a look at what we got on the table. These are your small three ton style, good for small cars. This is one of the recalled jack stands that you don't want to be using. And if you just got them replaced from Harbor Freight, take it back again because the uh, new ones had a problem. The, the first recall was an issue was in the casting here in the ratchet mechanism, where if you wiggled too much, it could lose and drop suddenly on you. Their new ones have problems in these welds and they're breaking. So not the best. This is a much nicer style of jack stand in the same small three ton capacity. If you look, the feet on this are just four very sharp points. Whereas this design has that long flat edge to distribute weight. I also like the tighter ratcheting mechanism because it's much harder to accidentally hit. Seems silly, but you may be able to bump this and accidentally release it if you're really fighting under a car. Yep. Another style of these three tons that I have that I like for a lightweight car are these all aluminum ones. These are made by Blue Point. They have a nice solid whole footprint that bites in and it rests on a transfer pin. Now, what I don't like about all these smaller jack stands, if you're going to be doing heavy work underneath, if you're fighting a transmission out, if you're pulling a whole subframe, anything that's gonna require you jerking on the vehicle very hard, where you have these set up as tall as they can go, they tip very, very easily. So if you had it all the way up, so you had room to get yourself underneath and you're fighting that transmission, you can potentially tip these. So I'm a big fan of always going up one size of jack stand for what you're gonna be working on. So here is a six ton. And if we look, a six ton jack stand set all the way down is the height practically of a three ton maxed out. So you can see how easy that wants to tilt versus how this is very robust and is not gonna fall over. So whenever possible, like a pair of these are $30, a pair of these are usually $69, $70. It's your life, you know? You're underneath that car, it's your life. Take it seriously. I've lost a friend to a jack stand collapsing on him many years ago. Spend the money, get a good jack stand, and always take steps to make sure you're safe underneath. So these are your basic jack stand types. They work best on a solid footprint especially with these pointed styles, they're gonna sink in too soft. If you're working in a gravel or dirt driveway, one thing you'll want to do is cut a piece of base plate that you can set, you know, and it can be a plywood, like a hardwood plywood, don't use a cheap plywood. My preferred method is you can call up a place like Metal Supermarkets, measure basically a two inch additional square, and you can get them to cut you metal plates relatively inexpensive, and then once you get them, spray them with a really coarse bed liner 
to help keep these from sliding and that's going to keep you from sinking in if you don't have a concrete pad or if you're in a driveway i don't like using flat pavers because again these can dig into those as it's a little bit softer not as dense concrete as a floor would be another way to jack up a car and this is what almost every vehicle that comes with a jack will have is a screw jack these will work okay when you're on the side of the road with a flat tire or if you need to get clearance to get one of these underneath again if you don't have one of those you can get this under a factory approved pinch weld or lift point and lift the car enough to get a big jack under it. Now, this is a big one because it's out of my Titan truck. And this is still a relatively small footprint before you're, let's say you're on the side of the road, you need to loosen your lug nuts before picking up the, the car. Otherwise, when you're jerking and fighting with it in the air, it's likely to fall over. You also can have your wheel stops. Anytime you're gonna be lifting or working on a vehicle, you wanna chalk your wheels. These are the factory included ones from the Titan. They're really cool. You can use blocks of wood or bricks as wheel chocks in a pinch, but again, you can run by places like Harbor Freight and get big rubber wheel chocks for relatively low money. All right, so why do I have wood and a brick here? In my opinion, a brick should never go under a car. I know some people make the choice to do it. I'm not a fan of it. I've used them again in the Jetta teardown video because I wasn't going underneath it and I just needed to support the car enough to roll it over and strip it apart. If you use a brick, good luck. I don't recommend it. That's, that's your choice. So why would we have the boards here? Sometimes when you're trying to get a lift pad onto a pinch weld and you have a car that has low side skirts on it, you can't get the pad onto it without hitting your side skirt. So you can cut blocks of wood down to sit on your lift pad to increase the height slightly to be able to get the throw to lift the car. Make sure it's a good quality wood so you're not going to have it splintering. So four by four blocks, they work well as wheel chocks. You'll sometimes see them on a big truck where someone will set it like that to do some lifting. I'm not gonna say I've never done that, but it is dangerous because you're giving a point where it can pivot and shoot out. So I would use that as an extreme last resort, as in don't do it, it's not safe, and it's very, very questionable to do. These work great as wheel chocks, and if you were doing a sideways lifting block. So if you wanted to lift potentially like that to get it up and secure to put your jack stand under it. So now that I've kind of gone over some of the lifting equipment you're going to have access to that you should go out and get, make sure it's quality, let's go over ways to pick the cars up. We're going to start with the truck. It's probably the easiest thing that you're going to ever come across. If you've got a full-bodied frame vehicle, it makes life simple. There's a giant steel frame that runs front to back that you can get a jack on. And just about every point of that frame is going to be somewhere you can lift on. You can also use a rear differential. The solid rear axle trucks or even on the Supra, they'll have a differential in the center that's firmly mounted to the vehicle that you can then use to lift. So we're gonna get a light turned on. We're gonna go underneath. I'm gonna point to a couple spots and then we're gonna go ahead and get a jack on and lift the car. Let's get underneath the truck here. So when you're underneath a solid frame truck, this is your frame. As you can tell, it runs the whole length of the truck. Don't mind that brick. I have no clue why it's there. It's just, it's always been there. And you can see it go all the way to the back where it then curves up at the differential. So that wouldn't be a good lifting place where the frame is curving. You want to lift anywhere that it is flat. Also, because this is a long straight section, you could put your jack stands really anywhere along the length of that frame. The main thing you're gonna to need to look out for on a solid frame truck is weight distribution when you set it down onto jack stands. We obviously have a good bit of weight in the front with the engine and we have the long length of the truck but not a lot of weight towards the rear. So a common place you may do if you're not going to be pulling the rear axle or doing any rear suspension work is you can lift by the rear differential and support the rear axle 
for your rear point and then you would come up here you can either then use your body mount area there so you have your lifts and supporting points as far across away from each other as possible and it's going to keep things safe while you're working underneath as you can tell somebody lifted on the body for some reason even though you have that nice big juicy frame to go off of what's unique on the johnny rev is i also have a front subframe i could use to lift you might not have that on your truck so i wouldn't bet on it things you will need to watch out for whenever you're lifting is don't lift off your transmission pan don't lift off your engine oil pan they're not designed to support the weight of the vehicle also kind of looking and realizing whew, i might need to uh put a shield on that trans pan that thing lives low so let's go ahead and slide a jack underneath we're going to pick this truck up both by the rear differential and show you how you can support one there and then we will set it up and lift by the frame So you want to make sure your jack pad is as centered. I like, if you look at this differential where that pad, the front of the jack is going up to, there's a little lip. You want to try to find a spot that is as flat as possible under a truck on its rear differential. When you're lifting by a differential, because you're lifting in the center, the truck can teeter back and forth. So you just need to be careful while you're lifting not to pull around and kind of jump in and out of it. Wait until you have it supported. There we go for that one. Let me grab the other jack stand. So she's a little uneven. What you'll want to do is you can see these exposed ratcheting teeth of your floor or your jack stands. Compare your tooth count on each side to make sure they're level. Because again, when you're lifting, the truck may be a little offset. So you want to know that your teeth are right. These have a little U, so make sure they're centered as much as you can on the axle. Come back to your jack and very slowly release it. Some jacks don't have a smooth method and they are just going to drop kind of like that one did. But now that we've got it, we can take the weight off. I like to kind of bounce the truck, know that it's good and solid. Looks like I need to uh, tighten up that rear shock there. So you can kind of wiggle it and we know the rear is now safely supported. So if we needed to do some work back here, let's say we're doing exhaust, we'd be able to installing a new trailer hitch but since we're supporting the weight on the axle you wouldn't be able to do shocks very well or leaf springs you can do brakes or anything along those lines so know what type of work you're doing and the best place to support it and go from there so now we'll go ahead and pull these back out go up front and jack a vehicle up on the side when you are planning a side lift Again, your goal is to lift as close to the center of mass of the truck as possible. So if you kind of look between the wheels, right about here is roughly center of the truck. If you're trying to get all four wheels off the ground, I prefer to do it axle at a time. So you're lifting the front, then lifting the rear. Because of the design of the jack stands, you're kind of in that U and you're not twisting them too weird. You can go side by side, but you have to be careful that your jack can freely roll. Otherwise, as it lifts, it can attempt to pull them off the other jack stands. So you just have to go slow, take your time, make sure it's behaving because a little extra time spent, again, getting your vehicle up and secure is important to protect you from harm. It's a matter of taking an extra 10, 15 minutes to get the car secured and jacked up for a job that you may be spending five hours under a car for. So it's a very small percentage to minimize your potential chance of injury over a very long time. So we will slide our jack, get it close to me, just kind of tuck it in under. And center it again as much as possible. And then you would just bring her on up. 
and set your jacks in. And again, on this truck, we can technically lift just about everywhere on the frame. I would not do it on the curves because your lift point is flat and static and you're trying to lift a curve. So what can happen is you're putting all of your pressure on one spot of your jack and it can force it and cause it to shoot out and slip very badly. So again, never put a jack stand jack on any curved surface because it will slip and you can drop the car on your head. So let's get this off and we will go to the Supra where we can talk about the unibody car, which is what you most likely are going to have and where you can lift it up safely there. So underneath on a unibody car, you're going to have factory lift points almost always indicated with these small indentations. You can lift off of these, but if you're trying to pick the car up very high, they don't serve well as a lifting point, but you can set your jack stand in there and it works well because the jack stand will cradle around it. Some cars, you can use the unibody rail. That's the section here. Sometimes that will be strong enough. If you are trying to lift a car off the unibody rail, go very slowly and watch to see if it deforms at all. If it's starting to deform, you can't use that. Like on the Supra here, this little section of unibody is not a suitable lift point. It will collapse on you very quickly and you'll crush your floor pan. And then on some cars, you're going to have access to your rear subframes. The subframe is a major structure component and works well to lift off of and also set jack stands on. And because of its shape, it will do well at locking in. So on this car here, if you're trying to lift it just on the side, it does not work well because you have no center lifting point and you would teeter the car. So this is one you're gonna have to lift front and then rear. And because it is low, and if you don't have a low reach jack, it would be good to set up on something like wood blocks or drive on ramps that we showed you. So that way you'll be able to lift the rear and still be able to get the jack under the front. So we're gonna set up, lift on a differential, set our jack stands under it, and then we will lower it down and we'll show you lifting on the front on a front cross member, which is a good safe place to lift it. So again, just like the truck, you come up nice and slow. Now this suspension has not moved in a long time. It's gonna make some noise. I'm gonna make some noise too while I'm having to jack this one handed. I'm used to usually using two hands when I'm jacking. So, real riveting. So we'll get this up and then I will show you, again, each car is gonna be a little different. If you jump online, you're gonna find information. You can also review factory lift points, which should always be your first step. See what the manufacturer is telling you. All right, so you would again slide this in and you can use the pinch points because they tuck in very nicely and give you a good secure platform. If you didn't want to do that or if you're expecting a lot of kind of jarring, I'd have to pick it up a little bit more, but you could on this car, tuck it in on either of those unibody and subframe mounts. I would not use that section of the frame rail. It's too thin. The main thing and what I'm trying to stress here is to look carefully at what is very solid a major structural component of the car that's not going to collapse and it's going to let the jack stand have a good purchase and a good bite into. That's where the factory manuals do a really good job of showing you multiple different positions that you can support from, but they won't always show something like the subframe mount. So it's one of those times where you do not make a questionable decision. Look it over a couple times and make sure whatever work you're going to be doing you pick the most secure spot that's not going to interfere with it and it will give you enough room to be comfortable underneath the car. So again here on this case right here or on that subframe do not use that floor. It will collapse and you'll ruin your car. So coming up front on this car now this is a unibody car that's rear wheel drive. Your front wheel drive cars are going to have subframes as well. The most important thing is do not line it up with the oil pan or transmission pan or you will ruin it. So again, just come up nice and slow. 
make sure as you get close that you get a nice secure pickup point on the subframe there and then you would just jack it up all the way and once this is up you can take a look and come up with your securing points you can on some vehicles set your jack stand on that mount for your control arm you can use the subframe you can use those front factory lift points those are all secure do not ever use something like your frame tie down this front core support none of that sheet metal is strong enough for you to either lift a vehicle by or to support the vehicle by with a jack stand so don't do that again that's not a safe thing to do you need to look for your major structural you know suspension mounting points where your engine bolts to that is going to be something secure enough for you to set up your jack stands set up your lifting points to get underneath and do whatever wrenching you need to do carefully so that's going to go ahead and wrap up today's quick tech tips video we've gone over some of the safe jacking points and lifting points of a car or truck whatever you're working on because again there's a lot of times to make questionable choices but when it comes to your safety take the time do it right no amount of time saving is worth the risk of having something collapse and fall on you while you're working underneath the car because if you don't have someone around to help you you're gonna be stuck there and potentially not have a good outcome as always i appreciate you guys hanging out with me today i'm jared reminding you to always make questionable choices unless it comes to your safety don't be a dummy see ya